And you know, I've come to learn more than anything. First of all, I didn't even realize how many enemies I have out there. But, so I see that there's a lot of people out there accusing me of adultery. First of all, if I was committing adultery, what business is it of yours? What's up? Welcome back to the channel. So in my opinion, that's the mindset of a man who thinks that he does not have to answer to anyone for anything that he says or does, even though he considers himself a so-called Israelite pastor. So, I mean, I definitely think that it's a good thing that people are continuing to expose him because he still seems to think that he has not done anything wrong. But this particular video is going to be mainly focused on how women and children are treated as straight way. And I'm going to start it off with a clip from a brother who used to attend straight way by the YouTube name of Dusty Hayes. You know, I, I basically sold my entire life away to go be a part of this ministry. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was done dirty, 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 dirty. And, uh, never had any other reason to speak about this kind of thing until I sat back and started thinking about the families there and these innocent women and children that are, that are mind controlled from the beginning with so many there, you're, you're overwhelmed and barraged with, with so many tactics that you don't have time to even think about what's going on because you're, you're caught up looking at yourself like, damn, if I don't listen to this guy, if I don't, if I don't stick this course the way he's putting it out there, you know, I'm, I'm going to hell. All right. So he said a lot in that clip, but it definitely appears that straight way likes to use a lot of mind control and manipulation type of tactics which is definitely one of the major signs that it is most likely a cult. And one of the main things I wanted to focus on is how he said that there's a lot of innocent women and children being taken advantage of. And it seems like the more and more information that we hear about straight away, the more and more that appears to be true. So this next clip is gonna be from a brother named Eric Gonzalez. If you're not familiar with the story, this is the man um, who passed it out, took his wife and his children and eventually ended up selling his daughter to another man. And he's going to give us a quick breakdown on the story and he's going to talk about how she was still underage when they started the initial process of trying to make her a man's wife at straight way. It was brought to my attention that obviously she was underage when it all started, but they got married immediately at her turning. Uh, she was born in 95, uh, uh, 1995. So immediately turning um, 18, I think in, in um, April, uh, no, I'm sorry, December of, of uh, thir was it 13. Are you talking about, about you talking about the third the third wife? My daughter, my daughter. I'm talking about my daughter with Mitchell. Oh, it's on, okay. All right. My daughter Erica with Mitchell. Hmm. So um I wasn't with it, uh, but they wound up doing it right away. But at the end of the day, she was she was underage when the whole idea started being entertained. So as far as what they did or they allowed, I don't know because I was a prep to because of the fallout that we pretty, pretty much had. Okay, so we all heard what the man just said. Now, of course, I can't come out and say that that's 100% true. But in my personal opinion, I do believe that this man is telling the truth about that. And if it is true, it is definitely a very unfortunate situation. But we can't even be that surprised coming from Pastor Dial and Straightway because he's pretty much made it clear that he has no problem exploiting some of our young women, as most of you have probably already seen by now. Are you good? Are you clean? Are you good? Clean, you cook, then you clean, then you cook, then you clean. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? That's what's right. What's wrong is I'm graduating from college. I got a career. I make six figures. I'm going to go out here and get all my degrees and everything, and, and then I'm going to sit out here and work for a corporation where men can gawk at me and stalk hold me over the water fountain and coffee pot and every damn thing else. You can sit there first night and probably end up getting pregnant. They're fertile myrtles. Good field. You know why? Ain't no blood been shed in the field.
The land is not defiled. The land is not defiled. So that's the reason why this land commands a price. So that's the reason why this land commands a price. All right, so I think it's pretty clear that some of these women are being mistreated and psychologically abused, to say the least. And I remember when I used to come across some of Pastor Dow's videos and he would talk about how he counsels married couples and how he performs weddings and different things of that nature. And I really just thought he was doing it out of the kindness of his heart and that, you know, he was helping lead young couples because he's an older man and he's a pastor. But I never would have thought that he was actually putting a price on these women and selling them off. So, I mean, that's why it's so important that we keep the most high in Christ first, because it's very hard to trust people out here these days. So this next clip is going to be from a former well-known NFL player who eventually joined Straightway. And to me, it just further proves the fact that Pastor Dow was advertising these women to the world. I, it was very clear and everybody knew at Straightway that I was looking for a virgin. And what y'all was doing with me was, and the one that I was looking right before her, and she was a virgin, but she, I will say this much, she had a hard time being um, accepting the fact that she was going to be uh, submitted to me, if that's a lack of a better word. Right. Uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. You know, and this is just a, a test. But I remember saying, if I told you to go hug a tree, would you go hug a tree? And I don't even know how I came up with that test. She said, well, why do I have to hug a tree? That just seems so demeaning. I said, well, that's how I know that you love me. Would you do it? And she says, well, I mean, and, and we spent four weeks and, and she just really had a hard time with the concept that I could ask her to do something that silly. I said, I said, and, I, and this is the promise I made to Bree, and this is the promise I made to the other sister if, if she would have said yes. I said, I would never ask you to break, I would never expect you to break the, the law of Yah for me. And I would never ask you to do something that I would never be willing to do for, for my master, in this case, Jesus. So if Jesus told me to hug a tree, do you think I have a problem to do that? No, I, I, I was willing to give up eight children, a wife, 16 years, wow. for Jesus. And so I, I'm expecting that same time. And now, which one is easier, giving up eight children or hugging a tree? I'll hug a tree all day long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he said quite a few questionable things right there, but of course, one of the main things I want to focus on is the fact that he said that he left his wife and his eight children for the Messiah, and I definitely don't agree with that. Now, of course, there may be certain situations where things are just out of your control, and I don't know the full breakdown of how his wife was and what the dynamics of their entire relationship was, but you know, a lot of times when we come into the truth, we have to understand that we have to be patient with people. And, um, you know, we can't just expect people to believe everything we believe and uh, follow what we follow just because the Lord woke us up. So I don't know if that exactly was the case with him, but it sounds like he woke up to the truth and he probably tried to instruct his wife on certain things and um, wanted her to come into the truth. But maybe she wasn't ready or maybe it's not the Lord's will. But either way, I believe you have to be patient with people and you know, live by be an example to where the way you live could possibly influence them to come to the truth. But you can't force anybody to wake up. I, I think we pretty much all know that at this point. So, I mean, as men, most of us already know this, but we can't just wake up one day and say that God told us to leave our wife and children. And if I'm not mistaken, some of his children are very young. Uh, I believe he said that he has a child so young that he hasn't even seen the child yet. And I understand that, of course, sometimes situations can be difficult and women can make situations difficult in certain cases for certain women. But in his case, he said he left. So I really hope that he can find a way to be in the lives of his children, because if not, I think it's something that he's really going to regret in the long run. And I think a lot of these men that straightway are filled with pride and ego, and that's why some of them require their wives to call them master. My mind was just so messed up, and I'm telling my master I actually had a dream. So my master, I actually had a dream, and all right. So I'm pretty sure they try to justify that by talking about the scripture where it says that Sarah called Abraham Lord, but of course we're living in a completely different time period, and none of them are Abraham or any of the prophets for that matter. 
And as far as I know, I don't believe that Abraham required Sarah to say that, but it seems like a straight way. Some of the men definitely require their wives to call them master. And in my opinion, it's just another sign that there's a lot of mind control going on. And it's another form of cultist like behavior. And another good point, which I believe I heard somebody make in one of the previous videos I watched, but I just can't remember who. But um, with all the stuff that our people have been through in this country, especially concerning slavery, why would you want to be associated with the word master? I mean, we all know that our ancestors and that our people have been through a lot, so we don't need to be reminded of certain words and certain terms. But I really do believe that it's another form of psychological warfare that straightway uses on the people that live there. And I believe that for the most part, all the men and women there pretty much have to submit to Pastor Dow. When I do my KTV live show, I am going to now, I can now talk about the process of how this all came to be, but it wasn't like I could just go up to the sister and say, man, can I get your number? You know, I had to get, I had to get her digit. I had to go to a man yes. who knows a man. Exactly. So when I went, and, and I didn't do, now some people try to, you know, you, and you don't have to do this stuff, but I have chosen to submit myself to pastor down to the straightway truth ministries order the way they got things, the elders, teachers. Yeah, so like I stated earlier, this guy was a well-known NFL player, and he's probably one of the most famous people associated with Straightway. So if somebody like that comes out and says that he's willing to submit to Pastor Dow, then you can pretty much be sure that, for the most part, everybody else is going to fall in line. So yeah, I mean, we clearly know that that was a big red flag because a man is only supposed to be submitted to the Most High and to Christ. So it's no secret that these type of organizations or cults whatever you want to call it they pretty much have to have power over you and control over you and they pretty much always have to have you in some type of fear which is one of the reasons that i believe that it is very possible that pass it out has a graveyard on his land so i do remember a small talk with jamie uh his brother steve a couple of the brothers in this land uh, about a lot of different things that were kind of odd that happened there um you know there's his own uh, grave plot there, right next to his house, where if members of the community died, whether they were older or younger, this is where people were being buried. That was a little weird, right off the bat. So yeah, I mean, of course I can't say that it is 100% true because I haven't seen it, but I do believe that this man is telling the truth. And... Of course, what better way to try to put fear in men, women, and children than by having a graveyard on site? Because, I mean, subconsciously and consciously, people are going to associate that with if they get out of line or if they do something wrong, that they can end up in that graveyard. And that's just my opinion, but I think it's a very diabolical way to put fear in people. But I want to go to the next clip about children being potentially harmed which i found very disturbing the only thing i wanted to see is what mother mother care mother jennifer was talking about child rearing and the, the rod um i've noticed some of y'all dwelling literally not no no talking no communication just like being the daylights out of a one-year-old two-year-old Okay, so I just want to interrupt it really quick before I let her finish. I mean, we know that disciplining our children is something that's biblical. And a lot of us, I'm sure, probably grew up getting whoopings and getting spankings. And honestly, a lot of those spankings and whoopings help save our lives in the long run. But when I hear her specifically say that she's witnessed one-year-olds and two-year-olds getting welled on and beaten. I mean, that just does not sit right with it's me. It's just so frustrating because they behave. But like Pastor always says in Mother Carol, the training starts at home. What that means is you train your child through communication. Because when your husband speaks to you, what he desires of you, when y'all leave the house, he ain't beating you as he's telling you. He's just communicating. So some of you want to leave the house and when your child starts cutting up, you're so embarrassed because it's a reflection on your household that you just get the rod and beat the daylights out of this child. And this child is crying and screaming and you just keep on beating it and beating it. Be quiet. Shut up. Shut up. Stop. And it's like, Jesus, have you ever taught this child how to behave outside of the house? 
So yeah, I mean, of course, the overall message of what she's saying was not bad advice. But like I said, my main concern is the fact that she said she has witnessed one-year-olds and two-year-olds getting beaten and getting well done. But I mean, of course, I was not there, so I don't know what happened for sure. I just hope and pray that she was over exaggerating but it definitely did not sound good but i'm gonna play another clip that will better explain the psychological and spiritual warfare that straightway indoctrinates people with yeah um, i remember sitting with dal one night and questioning him about uh, his deliverance methods and where he learned all this stuff from how how he got so seasoned and experienced in doing this and he admitted to me right in front of his wife carol too two witnesses um, that him and his wife used to travel around the US and get involved in different deliverances going on like different churches different groups they he was seeking the, the knowledge on deliverance at the time and he said the person who he learned the most from when it all became a reality when it all clicked for him was in I believe he said he was in Texas uh, a part of this big deliverance ceremony that was happening somewhere and he met uh an african witch doctor who was the only one able in the room to be able to deal with the spirit that they were dealing with at the time um you know this is this is part of why i came in the straight way um at first it was the talk of gold and silver food storage uh guns and ammo you know the guy stuff and uh, I had been studying uh, biblical truths for a while at the time too, so the uh, the deliverance part of it really did interest me a lot, um, which I was involved in quite a few mass deliverances, um, which were always all filmed. And during these mass deliverances, he would play this song, uh, "Nothing But the Blood of Jesus," over the intercoms, real loud. Not only real loud, but like slowed down a little bit, like you like you put your fingers on a record, and it's nothing but the blood of Jesus, and you can hear all these other frequencies and just different dissident notes coming in through what he was playing on the broadcast. You know, as soon as these deliverances pop off, dozens of people just start hitting the floor screaming yelling vomiting uh sometimes it'll be 10 12 brothers on one brother trying to hold him down because he's has a violent spirit in him you know he's thrashing about screaming saying profanities sometimes staring down the pastor himself and uh the pastor didn't like that during deliverance you start staring at him and wonder he'll get the attention of some other brothers and make them watch you Alright, so he definitely said a lot in that clip. And of course, I cannot say that everything he said was 100% true. But it definitely seems to me like he's telling the truth, in my personal opinion. Now, of course, you have to use your own discernment and your own judgment. But I don't see why these people come out and start lying after so many years. I mean, what are they gaining from this? And um, most of these witnesses all have similar testimonies. So, Again, I definitely believe that they're telling the truth and I believe that the Most High is using people to expose, pass it out, and to expose straightway. And if these things are true, that means that Pass it out is a very wicked man and that he may possibly be involved in witchcraft and sorcery and all types of evil. And from the way the man was explaining it, um, it definitely seems demonic how he said Pass it out was slowing down the music and then people started reacting a certain way to it. So, I mean, all this definitely seems like cultish behavior. And we have to remember that, of course, Pastor Dow does have a military background. So, it is very possible that he knows how to put people under mind control and he knows how to use certain mind control tactics that the average person would not be aware of. And, of course, that's not everyone who's been in the military, but there are certain people who have access to certain things. And I don't want to go too deep into that, but I'm sure a lot of you can get it idea of what I'm talking about and I mean the more and more I continue to look into the situation the more I continue to learn and um, I never was really familiar with his services that he has um, I definitely did not know about his deliverance services this is my first time coming across this but um, I mean when I did used to watch some of his videos it would just be the quick 
10 to 20 minute videos for the most part but i mean at this point things around him are starting to look very very dark and he's starting to look more similar to some of these mega preachers that have been exposed in the past but i'm gonna read these verses really quick this is matthew chapter 7 verses 22 through 23 and it goes many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity yeah so of course i don't know for sure if pastor Al has ever casted out demons or delivered people but we know what the scriptures say and it makes it clear that just because there's people who may have done these things or may have appeared as they do these things that does not necessarily mean that they are men of the most high but i want to end the video with this last clip and it's very similar to the clip that i ended the video with on the first video that i did on pastor Dow. but they are completely different clips but it just goes to show that pastor Dow is very powerful and he's not willing to repent right now so where is the outcry of all the people out here that's bearing false witness i mean there's no eyewitnesses to any of these false allegations you just have a bunch of butt hurt people i mean this is old shit from 10 15 years ago 10 15 years ago and it resurfs it because you get uh, one pastor that accused me slandered me and then everybody then everybody that that hates pastor now has just ran with it all right so we can see that despite all the witnesses that have come out this man still does not think that he has done anything wrong to anybody and he's complaining about the fact that some of these things happened over 10 plus years ago but it's really not even relevant because if you're still in sin you're in sin i mean you committed adultery took a man's wife the, other, the man is still alive and you're still with that woman so it doesn't matter if it was 10 plus years ago um it just goes to show that the most High gave him a lot of time to repent and to clear things up and we see that he still has not done that but i'm gonna read this verse really quick this is proverbs chapter 29 verse 23 and it goes a man's pride shall bring him low but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit so yeah we can clearly see that the pride of pastor Dial is bringing him low and of course all praises to the most high and to christ for exposing him and they're just using different people to do it and of course throughout this video there were certain things that can be considered as speculation and were my personal opinion but there were also certain things that are facts and that they cannot be denied but i'm gonna pretty much wrap it up much love and respect to everyone who watched the video i really appreciate it and at the end of the day the most high is always in control and he will always have the final word i'm out peace